With democratic backsliding being a growing EU problem, cities across the bloc increasingly struggle to find a common language with their national governments. Meanwhile, they have come up with creative tools to support democracy locally and increase public participation. The city of Mannheim in southwestern Germany, for example, has introduced both mandatory and voluntary citizen participation for urban development projects. I've been mayor for, for 14 years now, and, and the amount of, of participation processes uh, um, uh, raised uh, at least uh, doubled or more, and, and the range of participation processes, how we do it, the methodology uh, um, is, is really uh, broad. Uh, so we have randomized groups, we have um, co-creation processes uh, uh, with young people, uh, um, with neighborhoods, of course, uh, and so on. So, so we have a list of all our projects, which is transparent uh, to the public. And uh, on the list, uh, it's uh, defined which way of participation uh, uh, we will have. And now we want to work together, create a network and do benchmarking and use best practices of how to increase public participation and galvanize the public opinion through participatory budget, through citizen panels, through consultations, but also through concentrating on the real priorities, what people really want in our cities to be done, like for example, fighting climate change or fighting inequalities. These forms of active citizen engagement can bring democracy closer to the citizens, allowing them to have a say in local matters. However, the growing divide between some municipal governments and their national counterparts can hinder local actions to the point that some are calling for direct EU funding to cities. For cities to act as strongholds of democracy, they must have independent sources of finance. If the national autocrat can control their funding too much, he can strangle them. He can reward loyal uh, re regime party cities and punish those run by the opposition. Um, and even worse, if the national government controls the distribution of external funds, such as funds coming from the EU, he can channel them so as to reward his clients and punish democratic opposition cities. Én főpolgármesterként nap napin nap érzékelem, hogy hogyan folytják meg az önkormányzatokat, és leginkább a fővárosi önkormányzatot különböző pénzügyi megszorításokkal. Csak egy, hogy mondjak egy számot, a fővárosi önkormányzat költségvetés az nagyjából 250-300 milliárd forint között van. Csak ebben az évben 80 milliárd forint bevétel kiesés kell a városnak elszenvednie. Ennek egy kisebbik része az a járvány miatt van, tehát olyan hatások, amelyek például a tömegközlekedésen keresztül vagy más a város saját bevételi csökkentő hatások, de a többsége az kormány egyedi kormányzati döntés. When properly funded, participative tools can help protect democracy in cities facing pressure from the national government. Nevertheless, they might not be enough to fight democratic backsliding across the continent. I think uh, this is important, of, uh, of course, uh, um, otherwise we wouldn't do it. Uh, and it's, uh, um, in a way, uh, maybe uh, the future of, of, of democracy in, uh, uh, in not only uh, of the cities, but this is not sufficient to fight populism and uh, um, to avoid polarization in, in our society. And if you look into Europe, you have totally different political cultures regarding participation, co-creation and so on, and experimentalism. We, we have the northern countries, we have uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, um, UK, which is not, unfortunately not a part of Europe anymore, but. Uh, has a totally different uh, uh, political style, more mandate driven. But in each of these countries, uh, you had rising populism, uh, um, you had uh, uh, the feeling of people excluded. Uh, so there is no proof for me uh, that this is uh, really a sufficient tool 